Hi, I'm Marty Weiss, and we're standing in front of the iconic old Los Angeles County USC Medical Center, a facade familiar to most fans of movie and TV. In 1919, the American College of Surgeons first recognized neurosurgery as a distinct specialty in surgery. And in that same year, USC professor of neurosurgery, Dr. Carl Rand, established a neurosurgical service at the old Los Angeles County General Hospital, the primary teaching hospital of the University of Southern California School of Medicine. We are privileged today to have with us Dr. Stephen Giannata, Chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery at USC, Dr. Neil Martin, Chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery at UCLA, Dr. Gordon McComb, Emeritus Chair of Pediatric Neurosurgery at USC, and Dr. Keith Black, Chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery at the Cedars-Sinai Medical Center, to narrate for us the historical evolution of neurosurgery at their respective institutions. We are in room one, room one of the original Los Angeles County General Hospital. Uh, affectionately known to those who have practiced here since it opened in 1933 as, quote, Big County, unquote. Known to our, to, to soap opera fans as General Hospital. Nurse surgery started in Los Angeles in, actually in 1919. And that's when Carl Rand finished his residency uh, with Harvey Cushing. And he came west, started the first neurosurgical service in Los Angeles, in fact, probably the first neurosurgical service on the West Coast. In 1927, he started the training program. So our training program dates back to times that may be even analogous to some of our prestigious East Coast training programs. Uh, we had uh, people like Milton Heifetz, everybody knows the Heifetz clip. We had Joe Bogan, who a lot of people don't know, but Joe uh, was a co-contributor to the first paper on the split brain preparation with Roger Sperry, who was at Caltech at the time. And Roger got the Nobel Prize for that. Actually, Roger at one time was my across the street neighbor. Um, other faculty members uh, included Bob Pudens, obviously famous for the Pudens valve, but he was also the one who really developed uh, shunting into the vascular system. So the first uh, ventricular atrial shunt was really Bob's idea. Uh, the Rainey brothers practiced here, and uh, obviously the, uh, the uh, inspiration for the Rainey clip. Gus Cuneo actually operated on Bobby Kennedy. Uh, that was obviously a sad uh, episode for Los Angeles uh, history and of course uh, obviously Los Angeles neurosurgery really couldn't do much uh, for him because of the uh, devastating injury he had. Gus was a uh, sort of a curmudgeonly guy and uh, he, I could never pass him without him uh, reminding me that uh, he never got paid for that surgery from the Kennedy family. In 1951, Gene Stern, who was just finishing a neurosurgical residency at UCSF, the same place I trained, was invited here to Los Angeles to interview for a job to start a neurosurgery program by Bill Longmire, the head of surgery at UCLA at that time. The program developed when he recruited his first partner, Robert Rand, the son of the iconic California neurosurgeon Carl Rand. And Dr. Rand uh, joined Dr. Stern. In 1956, they were joined by uh, Paul Crandall, and in 1966, by Rick Batstorf. That was the big four that got UCLA neurosurgery started. They were a tremendously uh, innovative group. They were a group focused on excellence. They developed an outstanding training program. Generation two began when Don Becker came here in 1985 after an illustrious career at uh, the Virginia Commonwealth University VCU where I was a medical student and I got to know Don. Before he ever interviewed here, I called him up and said, as I was finishing my neurosurgical residency, I said, I wanna, I wanna apply as your first new faculty member. And Don said, well, who, who knows how that's gonna turn out? I haven't even interviewed yet, but indeed, a year and a half later, he called me during my fellowship at the Barrow Neurological Institute and said, you were right, 
I'm going to take the job as division chief of neurosurgery and I want you to be my first recruit. This was in 1985. He arrived in September and I arrived here in October of 1985, now a little over 30 years ago. Don was the chief of the division until 2001. I succeeded him as chief of the division at that point and then transitioned the division of neurosurgery into a department of neurosurgery in 2008 when we moved into the new Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center. When I was looking for a job, I stopped in at uh, UCLA, UCSF, and UC San Diego, and nobody was interested in having a full-time pediatric neurosurgeon at the time, so I got turned down. <laughs> I, I found that I really enjoyed working with children, and my first uh, interest was really in pediatric general surgery. Uh, and then when I had a chance to get some experience with neurosurgery, I felt that I'd rather do pediatric neurosurgery than pediatric general surgery. There really wasn't that much demand for pediatric neurosurgery going uh, back a number of years because there wasn't that much we could do. And actually the development of a successful shunt is probably what put pediatric neurosurgery on the map. Uh, the, um, about half of our cases uh, at that you know, early on were either putting shunts in or fixing them. Uh, and so uh, we could treat hydrocephalus and we made a huge difference in, in children's lives uh, by being able to control their hydrocephalus with, with shunts. And uh, I, even to this day, I always tell our residents we do more good for more children by taking care of their hydrocephalus well than, than anything else that we do do. Cedars began its humble uh, beginnings in 1902 with the opening of the Casper Corrin Hospital. And in 1918, uh, with the opening of a two-bedroom hospice that was the predecessor of Mount Sinai. In the 1940s, Carl Rand performed the first neurosurgery at Cedars of Lebanon. Uh, Dr. Rand was a prominent neurosurgeon in Los Angeles. He was chief of neurosurgery at Los Angeles County Hospital and because of his outstanding reputation performed neurosurgery at a number of the hospitals uh, in the Los Angeles area. In 1947, Tracy Putnam joined the staff of Cedars of Lebanon. Dr. Putnam had trained at Harvard and had worked under Harvard Cushion and was one of the pioneer researchers in Fintortons uh, that ultimately led to the development of Dilantin for the treatment of epilepsy. Dr. Emo Selex worked with Walter Dandy between 1936 and 1937 and served as uh, Chief of Neurosurgery at Cedars of Lebanon in 1958. He was instrumental in developing a rigid cannula for ventriculostomy. He also developed a universal handle for the kerosene punch and a lighted uh, guillotine for sympathectomy. Max Antler, who was Chief of Neurosurgery and Chief of Surgery at Cedars of Lebanon, was one of three neurosurgeons that operated on Robert F. Kennedy. In 1961, uh, Cedars of Lebanon and Mount Sinai merged to what is now Cedars Sinai Medical Center. Neurosurgical luminaries that have been a part of Cedars uh, uh, Sinai Medical Center include people like Sanford Rothenberg uh, and Louis Conway, uh, who uh, laboratory work included passing a stent through an arterotomy. Uh, that was a predecessor of endovascular surgery today. Uh, and also uh, Dr. Elliot Blindeman, uh, who was chief of neurosurgery in 1966, who was instrumental in passing the uh, mandatory helmet law uh, in the state of California. Dr. Milton Heifetz was chief of neurosurgery in 1967. Uh, Dr. Heifetz pioneered the Heifetz clip, which was one of the most advanced uh, clips for aneurysms uh, for, for quite a while. In 1997, uh, I joined uh, the staff at Cedar sinai and developed uh, the Maxine Donitz Neurosurgical in Institute uh, and subsequently developed uh, a full-time uh, academic faculty presence at Cedar sinai uh, Cedar sinai currently has more than 28 uh, neurosurgeons uh, attending on the staff, 10 full-time faculty, and a very uh, a robust uh, uh, research program as well as a teaching program. The Neurosurgical Residency Program was established uh, in 2004, and neurosurgery was established as a uh, Department of Neurosurgery in 2005. Face closed.